Hi everyone, my name is Angela Osterreicher with the WRHA Virtual Library and we're here today to talk about the research data management services that we provide at the Virtual Library. So a bit of housekeeping task, uh, just to mention that this uh, webinar will be recorded and should be available on our YouTube channel by the end of the week. We'll send out a link to this video uh, so that you can review it if you need to and feel free to share it with your colleagues. And I'll also send out a slide deck so you don't feel like you have to uh, take down every note. Uh, a lot of the information will be in the slides for you. If you have any questions, you can put it in the chat box. And there's time at the end as well if you have any questions. So what we'd like to cover today is a quick overview of the virtual library and as well as orientate you to our research data management services. So that includes our systematic and scoping review services. Uh, we'll review our, the services we provide with respect to research and data management. And we've also produced a research data, data management guide for your convenience. To start with, the WRHA library, it's your library and we provide access to electronic resources and library services for the WRG staff. That includes the Health Science Centre, eligible community health agencies, and eligible personal care homes. So we do provide an array of electronic resources that includes ebooks, e-journals, and databases. Feel free to make suggestions to us because we want to make sure that this library works for you. We provide the traditional library services, which are literature searches, document delivery, uh, anything that we don't have direct access, access to, we'll make sure that we get it to you from another source. And we also do education and training sessions, such as this one. So to find our systematic and scoping review page, you would navigate from our homepage and the URL there is there for your convenience. You would click on the services tab and then click on systematic and scoping reviews under the resources research headings. I've also provided the URL there for you as a quick in. This is the page that you'll come to that outlines the service, the uh, systematic review support that we provide. So the search strategy development Systematic reviews are much more involved than literature searches. Uh, you usually start your systematic review project with a protocol, and that means you will uh, address in that protocol uh, background information on the topic, which would be useful for the librarian to go over. Uh, you will have thought out a well-planned research question in the PICO format, you would have outlined your inclusion and exclusion criteria. Exclusions would be things like date, language, um, publication type, uh, if you didn't want letters, editorials, that sort of thing. Uh, it would also indicate the review process that you will be undertaking, who will, who will, who will do what, uh, and how you will reduce bias in the process as well. And uh, lastly, how to assess and summarize the studies that you do uh, plan to provide in your systematic review report. So as the name suggests, systematic reviews are done in a systematic manner. Uh, and they, we follow some very specific methodologies to create extremely sensitive search strategies so that you get the most comprehensive results. So many databases will be consulted to make sure that uh, no resource, no uh, citation is missed. Um, and besides databases, we will also search other resources such as uh, repositories. If it's appropriate, we would search things like clinical trials government, uh, gray literature, or even help with hand searching. Search strategies have to be replicable. So any databases used, any search terms used, any search limits used are generally recorded 
and if you're publishing are put into an appendices of the article. The searcher or the librarian would also generally write up the methods section of the paper as well. Systematic re reviews uh, take 18 to 24 months to complete, so you definitely need a team of people. You typically get very high number of results uh, because there'll be relevant and ir irrelevant citations in there, and those citations have to be uh, scanned through and, and excluded based on your exclusion criteria, and that's done at, at, as a manual review. So you do definitely need a team of people. Besides the search strategy, we will also ensure that a press review is done. So if a librarian is doing the search, they will find another librarian to actually review the search strategy that they've created, usually in, in Medline. And that will ensure the uh, quality of the search as well as reduce errors in uh, search strategy formation. I mentioned gray literature. By gray literature, we're talking about information that's outside the traditional publishing and distribution channels. Uh, it's generally produced by an organization. So examples of gray literature would be things like white papers, policy, government documents, speeches. Uh, as a few examples. Uh, so we would run the searches on the various databases. We would translate the search to the different database. So you can't just take the one Medline search and then continue to use that same strategy in CINAHL or in Scopus or Embase. You have to actually uh, rework the search strategy slightly or sometimes quite a bit. Uh, deduplicating. Uh, if a librarian is involved, they can help with that process. They will do the initial duplicate, deduplicating uh, using EndNote. Uh, it has the ability to search for uh, records that are duplicates and then you can compare them and decide which one you're going to keep or not. Uh, anything that you need to review in full text, if we don't offer it through our uh, electronic resources, then we will provide you with them through document delivery. And as I mentioned, we, the librarian can help with writing the methods section of the paper uh, for the search strategy and also compiling the PRISMA diagram. And by PRISMA diagram, you've probably seen these in uh, many of the articles that you've perhaps read, and it's just a flowchart of uh, the search, the total number of searches that you had through the databases and other resources uh, to the duplicates, the number of duplicates that are removed and how many numbers you have left, and then you're going to screen your records for the abstract first probably and eliminate records based on your inclusion exclusion criteria. And then you would move to a process of reviewing uh, the documents uh, full text again to see uh, whether you're going to exclude them or not. So you would uh, keep track of the numbers of records and uh, end up with a final total for your review. Some final notes about systematic review. The service is available to all WHA virtual library clients. Uh, instructional support is given if it's a course related requirement. If you are thinking of doing a systematic review, we would certainly recommend that you consult the Cochrane Handbook and that's available online. You have the URL there. Once you've thought through your protocol, uh, contact a WHA virtual librarian and book an appointment with them uh, to go over that protocol with them um, to give them the background on the search and the various other components of the protocol. Because of the complexity and skill level involved, the librarian is included as a contributing author on any publications. So to find our research data management page, you would navigate from our homepage, click on the services, click on systematic and scoping reviews, same place, under resources and research, and then click at the bottom of the page, you'll see a hyperlink for research and data management services. If you click on that, 
that will bring you to our next page. So these are the services besides the literature searches and systematic reviews that we provide as uh, data management services. So one thing that the librarian can help with is assistance in locating an appropriate journal for publication purposes. And we actually did a webinar uh, a couple of months ago, and you're welcome to review that on our YouTube channel if that's something you're interested in, or contact us as well. We can provide education on ORCID and other author identifiers. ORCID stands for Open Researcher and Contributor ID. And it's a unique and persistent identifier. It's actually uh, an international registry for researchers to create a unique identifier so that they can link all their publications and, and research activities in one spot. Uh, you can well imagine with all the researchers with similar names or researchers that uh, change their names or alternate their initials to full name, one initial, two initials, uh, if it's important for you to track your publications for uh, promotion purposes, for grant purposes, uh, then this is one way that you can do it by creating an ORCID ID. There are other, other IDs out there, such as Web of Science has Researcher ID, and Scopus has Scopus Author ID as well. If you're interested in citation managers, we can uh, help you with that as well. EndNote is certainly recommended for systematic review searches, but there's also Zotero and Mendeley as well out there. Uh, they are free and perhaps not quite as robust as EndNote. We can also provide support for open educational resources, uh, the use and development. And OER, Open Educational Resources, are teaching and learning resources that are freely and publicly available online. There has been a push in academia to provide these types of resources online for free so that they can be shared and adapted as needed. So these are things you can sometimes find courses, open textbooks, lesson plans, assignments, syllabi, videos. If this is something that you're interested in, or any of the above, please get in touch with us and we'll, we'll talk to you about your specific needs. So to get to our research and data management guide, the guide is, is there to provide you with further information. You would navigate from our homepage again, click on the help tab, and then click on guides, under guides, research and data management. And that will bring you to this page. So it's really a portal to information about various uh, research, data management concepts, agencies, and tools. Uh, if you're, for instance, interested in open access, uh, this the first link there is uh, a link to what, what open access is, the different levels of open access, uh, learning how to find open access resources or how to publish in open access. Uh, that's the uh, link that will help you with that. What review is right for you? There are many different types of re reviews, scoping reviews, rapid reviews, umbrella reviews. It's hard to, to figure out which one is right for you. So this, the second link there is something uh, that will certainly help you with that. It's a tool uh, that based on your answers to a series of questions will direct you to the preferred review type. This tool was developed at the Knowledge Translation Program at St. Michael's Hospital. The third link there, UBC Research Data Management Guide, will help you to, if it's important for you as a researcher or a requirement for you as a researcher to store and make available your data that you've generated from the research that you've done, then this guide will help you learn how to store and protect that data. The next one is also another tool that will help you with that. It's the DMP Assistant. It's a tool to help you prepare you to prepare the data management plan. 
The next one, try agency open access policy. Uh, if you've had funding from NSERC, SHRC, or CIHR, they have a requirement that you make your research available online for free. So this is the policy that you can refer to for that. Transpose is another database uh, of open journal policies. So finding open journal peer review information, co-reviewing or uh, pre-printing policies is sometimes uh, difficult to find for open journals. And this database has collated them uh, in one spot. Sherpa Romeo is another database, and this gives a summary of publishers' open access archiving conditions for individual journals. So if you decide to go the open access route, it would be good to consult this resource to see what the conditions are for the journal that you've selected to go with. Um, they may have certain conditions uh, in, in allowing you to freely uh, um, freely <laughs> make your research available. And the last one is metrics toolkit. Uh, again, if you're a research and you're required to state, uh, provide the metrics of your work, uh, there's all sorts of different kinds of metrics out there now. Uh, there's altmetric, blog mentions, H index, journal impact factor. This is an ex excellent toolkit. It'll tell you how those, each of them are calculated, where you would find them, how each should or should not be used, how you would use them in grant applications or uh, in your curriculum uh, vitae or promotion packages. And that, in a nutshell, is the research data management services that the WHA Virtual Library provides for you. While you're thinking of any questions that you may have, I'll just mention that uh, you have our URL there. Uh, it's a good idea to bookmark that so that you can get to all our resources very quickly. If you have any questions, you have our general email and phone number there. You also have my email. If you see the Ask Us symbol on any of our web pages, you can click on that and speak to someone uh, right away through text messaging. We monitor that daily. And the final uh, pearl of wisdom would be to sign up for our WRHA Virtual Library Newsletter. That way you will keep up to date with what resources, education opportunity um, that we have that may be uh, pertinent to your work. So not seeing any questions in the chat box, I will thank you for your attention today. And if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to contact us and uh, hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much.